chapter 28, The Shop, is on page 76. It was a small, sleepy farm town. A few trucks glided down the streets. A few humans sat on porches. A few stores lined the main square. Rambler parked in front of a bright white building. Then Mr. Sharif left the children with Roz, and he limped inside. Welcome to Tech Lab Shop, said a woman in a white suit. My name's Nadine. How can I help you? Mr. Sharif was distracted by all the robots on display in the shop. They came in dazzling variety of designs and sizes and colors. Standing still, eyes glowing, they calmly waited for someone to put them to work. When the man spotted a Rosam unit, he suddenly remembered why he was there. I'm the owner of Hilltop Farm, he said, and we were just hit by a tornado. I heard the siren, said Nadine. Is everyone okay? My family's okay, but I've got a Rosam unit outside who's in bad shape. The woman called over her shoulder. Patch, bring the Rosam repair kit. A robot marched into the room carrying a large case. He looked similar to a Rosam robot, but he was shorter and wider. The word Patch was lightly etched on his torso. Mr. Sharif led Nadine and Patch out to the truck, where the children were chatting with their robotic friend. Patch quickly scanned Roz's broken body and announced the cost of the repairs. The man stroked his chin, mulling over his options, until the children blurted out, Just fix her! Mr. Sharif nodded, and Patch sprang into action. With smooth, precise movements, the robot gently placed Roz on the ground. Then he grasped her broken arm and her broken leg and twisted. There was a thwip sound as each limb popped loose. Then he took new limbs from the case and thwip popped them into place. In a matter of seconds, Roz was whole and back on her feet. Robots never cease to amaze me, said Mr. Sharif, admiring Roz's shiny new limbs. The makers really outdid themselves with these Rosam units, said Nadine. However, you have our most basic unit. Would you like to upgrade her software or adjust her settings or polish out those scratches? Will that cost extra? Nadine smiled. I'm afraid so. This basic unit is fine, said Mr. Sharif, but I need to order a work crew. Could you send one over to fix up my farm? Not a problem, said Nadine. I'll send over a crew immediately. Chapter 29 is the aftermath, which is on page 79 now. Hilltop Farm was hardly recognizable. Buildings were flattened, equipment was missing, and debris was everywhere. The farm had no electricity, and the computer system was down. As Roz picked her way through the rubble, she realized she was off the grid. It would be hours before Mr. Sharif could track her electronic signal again. Was this the moment for her escape? No. Roz couldn't leave the Sharifs. Not like this. Instead, she did what she could do to help. The tornado had left behind a winding trail of destruction. Thankfully, it hadn't destroyed everything. The barn was leaning to one side, but it was still standing. Roz forced open the door and found the cows nervously bunched together in a corner. You are all safe now, said Roz in her calmest voice. How is everyone feeling? The robot was answered by a chorus of moos. How do you think we feel? I'm a nervous wreck. My whole life flashed before my eyes. The robot raised her hands to quiet the crowd. I am afraid the tornado destroyed much of the farm, including the milking parlor. The cows gasped. <gasps> but my udders are about to burst, cried Tess. Would you like me to milk you the old-fashioned way? Said Roz. One look at the robot's clampy mechanical hands and Tess shook her head. No thanks, she said. I can wait. An emergency crew is on its way, Roz explained, but we cannot be in here while they work. Please follow me. Roz carefully led the herd outside, through the wreckage, and down to the pasture. Some of the fences were missing, and the herding machine was broken, but the cows promised not to wander off, and they began grazing on the wind-blown grass. Three massive trucks rumbled up the driveway. Doors swung open, and a crew of robot workers climbed out. The lead robot checked in with Roz as the others began unloading supplies from the trucks. Then the crew got down to business. And here they are. Power tools buzzed, debris was cleared, fences were mended, holes were dug, machines were repaired or replaced, beams and walls and roofs went up, equipment and pipes and wires were installed. Clearly, these robots were designed to work as a team. The Sharifs wandered out back and stood with Roz. They watched as their farm was rebuilt before their very eyes. Several crew members marched over to the house, fixed a hole in the roof, and replaced the shattered windows. 
Finally, rubble and tools were loaded in the trucks, and the robots fell in line. Are you satisfied with our work? said the crew leader. I am satisfied, said Rose. At those words, the robots climbed back into their trucks and drove away. Hours after it had been devastated by a tornado, Hilltop Farm was better than ever. And chapter 30 is titled The Gift, and it's on page 83. The children walked into the machine shed, past rows of parked mark farm machines, and found Roz tuning up the milk truck. We got you a gift, said Jad, smiling. The robot felt something like surprise when the boy handed her a box wrapped in silver paper with a big red bow on top. Can you guess what it is? said Jaya. Roz started guessing. A bucket? A rock? A hammer? A turtle? A can of? Okay, okay, you can stop guessing, said Jaya. Don't forget to read the card, said Jad. Nestled under the bow was a little card. Roz opened it and read the following words. They were written in Jad's messy handwriting. Dear Roz, thank you for taking such good care of our farm and our family. We spent all our savings on this gift, so you'd better like it. Love, Jaya and Jad. P.S. Please tell us more stories about the robot on the island as soon as possible. And right here you can see... Um, I don't want to give too much. There's the left. So there's an actual letter that's inside the, the book. Thank you for that nice card, said Roz, although the handwriting could use some improvement. Jad rolled his eyes and said, open your gift. The robot untied the bow and tore off the paper and lifted the lid from the box. Inside was a tool belt. It was made of dark leather and had a wide strap of different size pockets for holding different kinds of tools. We thought this might make your work a little easier, said Jaya. It's designed specifically for Roz and robots, said Jad, so it should fit perfectly. The children helped Roz put on her new tool belt. Rather than going around the robot's waist like a normal belt, it went diagonally around her torso. Jad looped it over Roz's left shoulder and down around her right hip. Jaya laced the strap through the buckle and it tightened and, and tightened it until the tool belt was snug and secure across her chest. Do you like it? said Jaya. Here you go. Here's the image of Roz with her new tool belt. I like it very much, said Roz. Thank you for this lovely gift. The children smiled and hugged the robot. They really seemed to care about her. Roz wondered if they cared enough to help her escape from the farm. One of these days, she would have to risk everything and tell them the truth. For now, however, she did the next best thing. She led Jaya and Jad out to the oak tree and told them another story about the robot on the island. And chapter 31 will be titled The Campfire.